Okay, so we can watch the first scene. Okay, this is uh, the oh, yeah. probably one of the most no, important I'm looking scenes for the in the film. Uh, oh, every oh, scene oh, has got a beginning, a middle, and an end. Excuse me. So yeah. the scene must be constructed in such a way that the audience can get what is trying to be gotten across by the filmmaker. As you can see, the shots of uh, Jason and uh, Orchid are on a medium close-up. And the camera has taken them full uh, face over the shoulder. Over the shoulder is always a subjective shot. This makes the audience uh, as, an, as a warrior. That means uh, we are Orchid and we are also Jason looking at each other. So it draws the audience into the picture. Then it is shot also with telephoto. This is definitely telephoto and that throws the background out of focus. The two characters, if you take over the shoulder with a normal lens, the character which is nearest the camera will look too big. But here because of the telephoto, the two characters are almost the same size. Okay? Then the background is thrown out of focus, it becomes a fantasy element. We go into their mind. So here when they look at each other for the first time and they fall in love, so everything that has been done, a medium close-up, the background out of focus, the shots, uh, the, the uh, shot size of each of them is the same. It draws the audience into the scene as compared to the earlier scene. So mise en scène means not only what is within that shot, but also the comparison of the shot earlier where an extreme long shot and a long take has been used to take hundreds of people walking within the frame. So in a sense, Yasmin is saying that, look, this is the scene that we see in all Pasamalam hundreds and hundreds of people who are faceless. What happens if we just go and pick out two people from here? What kind of story can we tell? So to me, that scene works because it is contrasted with the scene that came earlier. Now, I think Yasmin never thought of this. She just did it with her feelings and it works. Yes, um, she he has already uh, Hassan has already perpetuated uh, the, the the director's uh, point of view. So what's left for me to tell you is from the writer's point of view. I don't want to repeat what you just said. And from the writer's point of view, I like the scene because it's the first time I very I from I deliberately made this uh, scene very early in the film. I didn't want to delay it any further, so that um, uh, audiences will immediately know that this film. It's about believing in, in magic. And, and if you don't believe in magic, then you will hate the rest of the film. You will say things like, when did they ever fall in love? I never fall, felt the relationship building. And uh, you will say things which some people have been saying, which is, uh, you know, they should, I should have seen more of them together. So you can give me a reason to believe why they fell in love. Uh, but this scene basically says, um, whoever wrote the script and whoever's making this film believe in it happening instantly and it's going to last for eternity. This, this is what this filmmaker believes in. And if you still argue at that point, then then I have no, I have nothing to say to you because I've already established very early it's about romance, pure, simple, innocent, magical, out of our control and probably divine willed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there, I, I, I like it. there were also two other things that I forgot to mention eh, on the using the use of the cinematic apparatus as I mentioned earlier that you have to be in control of the technical elements for instance here it was shot I think easily either at f4 or 5.6 okay that throws uh, if you focus here if you go at a 2.8 this one will be out of focus and because this was telephoto and in telephoto I think probably the maximum is 3.5 or 4 I don't know eh? so that makes everything soft not sharp that creates the, uh, the, the addition of the fantasy feeling. The other one is the use of sound. When they were looking at each other, when two people are in love, they can be in the middle of a thousand people and yet they are unaware and the sound is brought down deliberately. Of course. You know, especially Malay men. God, I have to be nice to my wife now. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I just trained her to sleep in another bed away from me and now I have to be nice to her again. Of safety suggested that wives are, should be <laughs> I imagine this is probably what a lot of used to do with his wife. Play with her. Okay? 
women in Malaysia must demand that their husbands treat them like that. So, uh, <laughs> so the bright, uh, uh, the bedroom is a very private place. But this scene is more or less extending the development of the character of uh, Harif as a father. Eh? You can see right from the beginning and through his dialogue also, they are not very, uh, what do you call, in agreement with Orchid going with a Chinese boy, isn't it? But at the end, what does he do? Even though he did not understand about this, but he takes the daughter to go out and look for Jason which means deep within him there is a, some a spark which the women already have in full but the men it seems here is this feminist uh, <laughs> no, this male, a female chauvinist uh, uh, saying something bad about men uh. men don't get it, men don't get it. <laughs> the men don't get it so they don't have to understand they just have to love the women uh, why? because uh, whatever they know is going around in a circle and then it comes back to them rather than being very direct men are supposed to be very direct isn't it okay, so the darkness that is created in the bedroom is a metaphor for the darkness of his mind perhaps that is one that we can read into the, the film uh, the use of the language of film but from the other point of view uh, from the religious point of view this scene is wrong so Yasmin will have to answer for it until uh, because Oh, duduk memandang perempuan yang bukan mohrim pun dah tak boleh kan apalagi kalau kita berpeluk-peluk walaupun dalam cerita ni uh, dia orang husband and wife so we have to be very careful because the film is a very powerful medium because it is putting a lot of things on the screen that is affecting the psychology of the audience so if we have people reacting to it in a negative way we cannot blame them because once you arrange things in a certain way that meaning is being created for sometimes uh, you have a rape scene you don't show the rape but you see shadows or you hear sounds that's already creating images in the mind like haiku poetry and music is very close to, to cinema because they create these feelings within you they create the images which are actually not there struck epiphany ah there's something about these two things huh, that strikes very deep into the hearts of men which is why music and poetry what uh, has been there from ancient days even with, within primitive societies so we have to be very careful uh, we have to ask ourselves are we Muslims first or filmmakers first for me it's very fine if uh, uh, you know films like Iran uh, where you have husband and wife you never see any closeness but you know what Lat said uh, <coughs> when he was doing Kampung Boy he was in Los Angeles and then uh, they were making this scene where the uh, the storyboard has the mother the father kissing the mother and Lat told them no 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 we cannot do this in Malaysia so they were very surprised how come? Where does the father kiss the mother? Oh, behind the door. What kind of country is your country? Their culture. See? So we must be very careful that it is not being liberal or being prudish. But we have to be very careful that in Islam, this is what it says. And if you don't go very deep and learn about the hakikat, you will not be aware of this. And you have to answer for it. So my question, not only to Yasmin or my, my, my statement to Yasmin and Uwe and also to Amir Muhammad eh? are you filmmaker first are you <coughs> or a Muslim first you have to choose you have to choose, you have to choose. Okay. but this is theology this is not film you should discuss it sure okay fine um, I'm, I'm a Muslim first um, I would like to say um, but I and I also believe that Allah judges us for, judges us for our intention and not uh, what we do, I think, ultimately. Because there are people who do really bad things, but their intentions are very good. And I think, I mean, all of that is for intentions. I wanted to say in the scene, and I had to weigh it, and because I have to make a film, I have to weigh it into the my, 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 my own values, uh, and tawakal, and, and see what, how people react. And people can take it whichever they want. I find, uh, I, I, I made that scene knowing um, uh, some surveys, uh, statistics say that um, um, now that the number of single mothers uh, is highest among the Malays than in any other race. Um, the number of women uh, who who, uh, who are who are more unhappy about their family are now more and more in uh, amongst among the Malays, and the number of the, the number of child rape, the number of wife abuse, number of um, Divorce is the highest amongst the Malays. 
the Malays are of course largely Muslims. Now, I think that I have a concern. I have a concern with this because when I, re I remember reading about how Rasulullah used to treat his wife. He used to race with his wife, he used to play with his wife, he used to, he used to, he used to, um, he used to be very close to her. And uh, her, 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 her demands, her sexual demands have to be met every time. And uh, cooking is, uh, is, is uh, providing food, is, uh, and it's the husband. So there are so many things that are so lacking in marriages nowadays. I know of most, many of most of my Malay friends where their parents don't sleep in the same bed anymore. And, and I don't, somehow I don't think God likes this. Somehow I don't think God is very pleased with the fact that Malay men are getting colder with their wives and are marrying otherwise really needy without considering um, her feelings. So that I, when I was making this scene, uh, I, I was executing a part of the plot. How I executed it uh, res um, was a direct result of my concerns, my personal concerns about my people. So while I was making it, was I a Muslim first or a, or a, or a filmmaker first? Absolutely a Muslim first. I think I, I, I kind of said that to myself while I began. When I, I began the film with Bismillah al Rahim, knowing fully well that I'm going to expose some skin, I had to wait within my own conscience, and that's what I did. Um, so there. <laughs> mm. uh, let, let, me say, let, let, let me say another thing. Though. Let me say another thing. I find that um, uh, our society, particularly Malay men, have become such hypocrites. It's unbelievable. Um, the, 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 the very same men who are will very happily go to another channel to watch a football match and watch uh, how many men? 22, 22 men, men run around and exposing their auras because uh, you know, Malay men are supposed to cover between their punya lutut and their punya navel and they're very very happy to watch men running around exposing their auras no complaints and have been going on for decades but the moment I have to combine then so, so to this idea of covering auras the, uh, the, the question of how Islam are you only arises when it comes to women. It doesn't apply to men. Yeah, yeah, so the day they ban football, uh, I might exclude Bukamban from my problem. So. <laughs> okay, she has said it. I'm lying. The day. <laughs> so, uh, I promise you. No, oh, okay. Yes. Um, but he, uh, well, in, in, in also, you can see, I think what Masa is trying to say is there another way of showing that? Probably, but you know, um, th there are a million ways to skin a cat, as they say. But I, since I'm Yasin Ahmad, I skin a cat the way Yasin Ahmad does. Uh, and it's, uh, in every scene that you execute, um, there are, you have priorities. What are the priorities? The priority I wanted to say here is, uh, is love. It's love, it's understanding, it's acceptance, it's intimacy between husband and wife, acceptance of people's mistakes, uh, as you would expect people to accept yours, uh, tolerance, advice, um, and things like that. I can tell you something though, in France, the most moving comment I ever received for Sepet from Europeans uh, was this, and a few people said it. You know, what they said, world media has painted such a dark face of Islam. But in your film, they said, you show us Muslims who are loving, who are gentle, and who are playful with each other in their family. And for me, I don't know whether this amounts to anything, and I think that that scene, it's one of the scenes that contributed to this face of this love that is gentle and loving and not violent and uh, destructive. And uh, I hope, I hope to Allah that perhaps this is something that he is pleased with, uh, that I should show people who think Islam is bad, that Islam is actually very human and very loving. Interesting. Another side of the coin to look at. together with that.
So the blind man is all alone in his world and you can see that nobody is reacting to him or giving him any money here. Yeah? So uh, he's in his own world, nobody can help him. So same thing when you fall in love and then you have a problem uh, with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, who can help you? Only you uh, have to solve it yourself. But what can the parents do? The parents can only sympathize. And what is so uh, unique about that scene is that uh, it is full of pathos at the same time, you start to laugh. Now, this is something which is very difficult to do. And I think uh, probably Chaplin is the one who comes to mind. Eh? Uh, the scene where the flower girl uh, who was blind gave the flower to Chaplin. And that look on Chaplin's face is unbelievable. It cannot be rivaled by cinema, any, any, any filmmaker. And I think that is what I felt. Uh, that you didn't, you didn't have to say any words. So the blind man and this group of people sitting there, they are no different from each other. They are speaking with their hearts. And who can understand them? Only the people who are perceptive. And you can see, uh, when they berkembang eh, in film language, uh, you know why they, people have nude scenes? When you are nude, you are as the day you were born. There are no secrets. And I remember in this film, they was nominated for the Academy Award, uh, the German film. Something Distant Journey, what was it? about two years ago I uh, forget that at the end of the scene is uh, you see the husband and, and wife uh, in a very intimate scene they are nude which means that they have now reconciled before that they had problems uh, so you have to use nudity in the correct way from the western point of view okay so here when you berkembang for inch, from ancient days until today this is how Malay women this is a mark of their culture so here it shows uh, the, the culture that has come down from Indonesia, from India eh? That's, this is how women bathe and uh, by wearing that you are going into them this is what they were as from the beginning until today and then the man if he wants to join that group he's got to be like yeah. them again this feminist director is bringing men down to the level and he's sitting right at the right bottom, bottom okay. and uh, the funny thing is he doesn't have a hair and he gives the comb and the girl forgets her trouble for some time that's very clever and the scene that follows immediately after that is shot of Jason from the back so here everybody is from the front it is contrasted there's a pattern in an organization taken from the back and it sits very far away and you can see it's balanced trust in design we call it balanced trust eh? when you put a character on top there's a lot of blank space this shows danger so you know uh, the way it's been arranged eh, from the beginning uh, the black screen is wiping in Jason at the beginning and the girl and he sits at the pool and you see them from the back and the platform is point trust those are all danger signs so you can see all the markers have been put here and there to tell us this is not going to happen and the first few images are telling you love story between uh, uh, Malay and uh, Chinese is not going to work but at the end she gives hope yes I like these two scenes because they happen by accident for me you know um, you know, the, um, maybe the Kumbakamban scene can be very un-Islamic to a lot of people. But for, for my personal uh, feeling is while I was shooting it, and now when I see it again, 
these were gifts from God for me because we were shooting the first day at Yule. We were shooting the meeting at Pasar Siang. And I saw this blind man, and I had intended to cover uh, cutaways that can be used to, for editing purposes. We saw a few things, and uh, one of them is the dancing dolls. Uh, that I thought I must buy these two dolls. We can shoot them later as cutaways, and uh, they will come in handy somehow. Because it's about a boy uh, excited to meet a girl. That's how they, they look like. And but the blind man, I nampak dia, and I look at him, and I thought. There is a reason why he's now placed before me while I was making this film. I don't know. Every morning, that's my answer. Please guide me as I'm making this film every day when I was in Ipo. And when I saw him, I thought, why is he placed in front of me? And I, the thing that struck me is this man, um, he cannot tell who's Chinese, who's Malay, who's Indian. He just sits there with his music and people go past him. He can't tell one way from another. And on that score, he was above everybody else. He was, he was, he was, he was, in my, in, in my ranking anyway, he was more noble than anybody on that street. So I had to shoot him, I didn't know where I was going to put him, but I have a genius for an editor, and uh, he put it in just the right place. The, the, the tanga scene, um, uh, the tanga scene, uh, I, w I want, I felt that uh, there was going to be danger tomorrow uh, in, this, in the story. The next day there was going to be danger. Things are going to happen that are going to change everybody's lives drastically in the story. What's going to happen to Jason, what's going to happen to Orchid. I felt there was a lot that was going to disrupt uh, the course of history of these two children, two kids. And uh, there was a love in Jason's, li in Jason's life, which is uh, him uh, with his mother. That was a nice love. And the, his conversation with Kyung, I knew that there was a love. And I love love because the saying laughs before a storm uh, rings true for me because sebelum hujan, you can just suddenly uh, the pupuk is not tak bergerak, the, 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 the crickets are no longer chirping and, and then there's a storm, you know. So, uh, so <coughs> taking after nature, I felt there was a need for a lull in the pace in Orchid's family. There was no lull then. So I thought I need a quiet moment between the family and I have a feeling that this will have an impact on when she has to leave. So um, the, 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 the women in between clothes were pottering about Mukumbai. And, and I, so I said to them, uh, I said to my DP, I said, look, I want to shoot something extra. I want them on the staircase, and I want the servant to be on top. And uh, because, uh, for, the, for silly reasons, I hate the way Malaysians treat their servants. I hate, hate, hate the way we Malaysians treat our, our, our maids, our domestics, not servants. And so I, I knew I had to put her on top because I wanted her to be above everybody else. In that way, I was sticking a finger up at Malaysian families who bully their maids. And I wanted the man to be at the bottom because, um, because he's obviously the strongest in the family. And uh, a man who doesn't mind sitting at the bottom is, is, is truly strong. Uh, he's, not, uh, made of more, he's not made effeminate by sitting at the bottom. So I think by putting him at the bottom made him the strongest person there. I can take this. I can make a fool of myself. I'm that strong. But Hassan is right. I am deeply um, uh, inspired by Chaplin because um, I think what Chaplin was doing uh, was summed up by Jack Lemon very beautifully. Jack Lemon said it's a hard thing to write a, a, a good drama, but uh, harder still to write a good comedy. But the hardest of all is to write a good drama that has comedy in it, which is what life is. And I think um, I wanted to capture that. I wanted True Fall said something very similar, which is um, if you can capture, uh, if you can have co drama and comedy, uh, al al alternate, alternately, you have a success. But if you can put drama and comedy in one scene, then you have magic. So that's what what I was trying to do uh, while shooting it. You know, of course, when Ha Haris held out the comb and uh, Orchid uh, took it, she. She helped the father. If you see it again on a better copy behind them, uh, unplanned, unrehearsed, Ida started weeping mm -hmm. and put her head on uh, Adiba's shoulder and Adiba started weeping. It was meant to be a funny scene. Mm -hmm. The fact that it moved the actresses to tears made me feel blessed somehow. Those are good actors. They react just like in uh, The Graduate. Huh? The last scene in the film, they have run away from church. 
uh, she left the man she was supposed to marry and then they are sitting in the bus and the director rolled the camera and rolled the camera and as good actors they reacted to each other they are thinking mm. what is going to happen after this will we live happily ever after mm. that was very clever now back to the cinematic apparatus for this particular scene eh? what is uh, what Yasmin mentioned about the shooting extra which is not in the script take the blind man and so on eh? uh, this is what we call b-roll b-roll uh, uh, very good directors they always take one extra shot take this take that and so on because in the editing room they just fall into place so this is very important when you do a feature film after you have shot you just take a few uh, close up here clo whatever whatever you find around you never know when it's going to work that comes through the the feeling la. so it was not in the script no, no, no the, the tango is the, the, the staircase is not in the oh, script I see. not at all Last minute on the spot. Can we do this? Please ask the producer. She said yes. We're waiting for night time. Let's do it. Not the script. Blind man not in the script. Of course. Yes. Um, there are different types of directors. I think I I real I found out that um, Robert Altman uh, once said that um, about a third of the most memorable scenes he ever shot were shot by accidents. So. So I, I, I love that. I fall in love with locations and I fall in love with my actors very easily. I fall in love with people very easily. So when I find a location, there is history, there is, there is things that have gone on into it. It would be disrespectful of me to bring my story and, and, and lock it onto this location. And, uh, and I, I, I briefed to my actors very early and they said to me, how to act, we are so new. And I said, acting is reacting, like you said. Just remember that acting is reacting. Tell me what you would react to when they told me. Uh, for example, um, I people, no, I can't reveal people's private lives, but uh, they told me about their private lives and I incorporated it into my script so they can emotionally react to it. Like Jason's mother uh, was very close to her son and uh, in when, when she has quarrels with her husband, uh, she feels closer to her son as if um, he's the only friend that she has in the house. So I put it in the script. Uh, she says, well, please don't be sad, because when you are sad, I feel lonely, and you're the only friend I have around. So when she said that, even though she's a first timer, uh, her voice broke, and she was holding back her tears, which is good. I didn't want her to cry. I wanted her to hold back her tears. Looking at the cinematic apparatus again, eh, you can see that the art direction, uh, the color blue has been chosen. Eh? She wears uh, blue uh, baju kebaya, eh, sarung kebaya, and he is also wearing a blue shirt. Mm. Eh? So blue is a receding color. And it's very important uh, that when you construct a scene, you got to know what kind of colors. Uh, what does this scene mean? Therefore, what kind of colors? Okay. And then the the light coming out from the TV set also creates an unreal effect. And uh, there's a little bit of backstory. What was not told us earlier is now coming out through the dialogue, and it works. Usually, you try to go for a flashback. You also did a flashback, but it works because that flashback <coughs> is not something that happened earlier, but it's happening right there in the mind of the character. This is what people don't understand. They think flashback is something that happened long ago. No, it is happening at that present time in the mind of the character. So here, she is lonely, so she knows what the son is feeling and then all she wants is tell him to tell him to bring the girl back because she knows this must be no ordinary girl and the tragic part of the whole film is the two mothers never met and the girl never met uh, the the mother this uh, the boy's mother and the boy 
I think uh, uh, I, I, they only saw him from a distance, isn't it? The uh, the yeah, Orchid's yeah. mother never talked to Jason. Did did did. Ah, uh, but you feel ah uh, ah uh, uh, yeah yeah yeah. But you see, they never meet face to face. We only sure, hear yeah. through the dialogue. So that becomes very pathetic, and this is why I think audience were very much affected because all these things came into play. So this is what Just Start is all about. It's here, it's there, and it's everywhere. And in the end, it all comes together. So you know the word regi. Eh? Regi means director in uh, the German language. I think the go career told me that regi means ramuan. Uh, it is the director who takes all the ramuan. It's like a cook who takes this and that and that puts together. And when he cooks, the ramuan disappears. Something else comes up, like the cake that we were cutting just now. Eh? The cake is made up of sugar. It's made up of eggs. Made up of flour and so on. Eh? But when you look at the cake. You can't see the eggs, you can't see the flour, and so on. It has become something totally different. Mm. But the taste is in the pudding, as they say. Once you taste it and it tastes good, that means everything worked. So it is actually the director. The script is not the film. It is the director who raises it up together with the actors. But ultimately, it is still the director. The scene still brings tears to my eyes. Mm. It is powerful. And the sudden contrast, suddenly this horrible karaoke music. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's why it works. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I like it because because of what's happening. I like it for so many reasons. I like it because um, Eng Chu Xiong's father had just passed away the, the year before, and uh, he has told me that uh, very often that he wish. He wished that he could go back home to be with his mother more often, and so, um, so I, I had a feeling it might move him. Um, and the impossibility of it all, the mother said, you being surprised that the mother is very accepting of Orchid and saying, I don't mind, bring her home to meet me. And when he, when he buries her, his face in her lap, it can, with what it says is. Um, I wish I can bring her home, but I can't now. She's left me. Uh, she, but he doesn't have the, the strength to say it, which, um, which, which is heartbreaking. When, when we were shooting it, um, we could, I could see through the camera that, um, that he was crying. And you could, if you look closely, you could see the urad on his forehead that had risen because he was holding it back. I keep telling them, hold back, hold back, hold back. And so it was already rising. And he was just that close. He was already tearing. So when when the the actress saw him doing that, she felt the the emotion welling up. So I had to pull my face away from the little monitor because I was crying. I went, oh my god, I'm I'm starting to cry. So I pulled away from the monitor to calm myself down, and I looked around the the crew, and they were crying. And so everybody was crying. I couldn't say there was cap. There were cameras. There were wires, and so it was completely staged, of course. But the sincerity of the scene was so, so strong that you, everything, all the wires and cameras became blurred, and you saw a really moving scene between two people who felt what they were, who really felt what they were doing. That's why I like it so much. And I think that's the saddest scene of all. Um, some people complain that uh, the end scene is not sad enough when she's reading the, 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 the letter. Um, partly because um, the mother's crying too much. Now in France, um, it was very, I was very relieved because when the mother tried to started to cry too much, when she was reading that thing about you are the poetry from God, that's very moving. I think that's very moving and people were starting to cry again. But when the mother started crying too much, uh, it became funny. It became comical, it became silly, that scene. And in France they laughed sniffing and laughing that made me very happy because, like I said, I, I've always wanted to achieve what Chaplin achieved, to put comedy just side by side with great drama. And in that scene it moved. But for some people, I think, in, I think Malaysians wanted to continue feeling sad for that last scene. They were very disturbed by Adiba cry, uh, Aida crying so much. For me, it was perfect because it made it funny. Yeah, it didn't uh, affect me at all. It, it was fine. Yes. But you know what you said about uh, the hero uh, talking about his father who died last year reminds me of Ozu's Tokyo story. Mm. Uh, that young youngest son who lives in Osaka never 
came to see the mother at the at the station and when the mother died uh, he remembered what someone told him earlier that you cannot serve your parents beyond your grave and I think he felt very much all of us do that even I myself I think back now I, I was I'm always thinking that I could have done so much more for my parents yes. and now they are gone yes I think that's what must have affected me yes and that's why I want to be Ubra because it's so it my folks make my parents so mm. happy they're the prime reason why I make my films, and I'm not lying. And I'll tell you why. They're not the ultimate reason, because, um, I don't know about you, but when I do something that makes my parents laugh, or smile, or tickle, or pleased, or proud, I feel like Allah is smiling down on me. I feel God's pleasure, and this may sound too sentimental for you, but that's how I feel when I make my parents happy. And I want to keep on making films, and I, I just want to keep on making films because it makes them so happy. Rabun made them so happy, and Sepet made them even happier. Some people prefer Rabun to Sepet. I don't, don't really care, because the most important thing is my parents prefer Sepet, and this pleases me to know it. So Gubra, in Gubra, Orchid will meet Jason's parents. So uh, how, Pazan, how do you see setback in relation to relation cinema? Is this a turning point as the renaissance began? Hmm. Uh, daripada apa ni Rahim Razali kita nampak the new wave of filmmakers. Dia orang bukan lagi buat movies, dia orang buat films. Maknanya uh, they have something to say. Jadi kita kalau nak tahu tentang <coughs> sedikit sebanyak tentang sejarah Malaysia, kalau kita tengok semua filem uh, Rahim Razali kita akan lihat kau dalam dekad ini begini dalam dekad ini begini uh, kemudian kita nampak uh, apa ni Uwe masuk uh, suami baba suami baba yang Melayu lain dia pan Asian punya Melayu and then uh, nampak sangat dia punya uh, dia mengangkatkan wanita tau that wanita is bukan lagi subservient they have become women in their own uh, right and they are leaders and they are moving things that is dia punya perspektif and this is related to her So this is dalam literature kita panggil the genetic approach. The genetic approach ni kalau kita nak faham siapa pengarah atau siapa writer dia, kita tengok watak-watak dan cerita yang dibawa. Maka kita akan lihatlah pengarah dalam uh, apa ni filem dia tu. Dan uh, Uwe pula dia pun explore daripada sociological point of view apa itu Melayu. Dan dia melihat Melayu sangat buruk. Dan kita lihat semua karakter dia kan eh, bahawa it is a cycle. Kalau tengok Joho Sin awal dengan sin akhir sama Maknanya tak ada kemana Pimai-pimai Tam tu lah uh, Kita tengok uh, Irma Fatima Trying to see uh, Malays Looking for their identity So she got a Malay who came from Back from London And then he was trying to find himself Where is his Malayness You see uh, Hishamuddin Raiz uh, uh, As you know He's anti-establishment And in Dari Jemapok ke Manchester You can see that he's making a call to the young people of today. You got to break out of this mentality, this cocoon that you are in. And his story is a metaphor. They are in Jemapo. They are going round and round in a circle, and they want to go to Manchester, and yet they cannot. But he's saying in the first shot, one man on a motorcycle is going over this hill in that extreme telephoto, and when he comes up, there are this 30 or 40 motorcycle riders. That means it takes only one person to move. And then in throughout the film, he scatters the images of this group of people moving silently behind. He's saying that they are all ready. You're only wait, waiting. And at the end, uh, uh, this guy who sang Laoba, he didn't make it. And you know, in the 60s, Laoba was a song that broke into uh, Germany. Eh? It became an uh, international hit. Uh, this guy, I forget his name, he didn't make it. But he's looking up to the sky. But you are the guys who can do it. So it is all hidden using a formalist approach. If you want to understand that it's from Manchester, just like Rabun, you have to look at the cinematic apparatus. And these are the people who are going to change the face of the industry. And uh, Sepet is probably the turning point where uh, a movement is going to be created. So you see in Sepet, there are so many unsaid things. And this is the unsaid thing that subtext, that is the thing that reaches out to people. You know Shakespeare. If you read Shakespeare, all his words are iconic. So, in from this point of, of semiotics, eh, 
Icons are something that is easily understood. When he says, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come here not to praise Caesar, but to bury him. The good that men do is off inter in their bones. Their evil lives after them. The words are so iconic. You can easily understand. But what yeah. does he, what did he mean? What he said contrasts with what uh, Brutus said. Friends, Romans, lovers. People could understand friends, Romans, but lovers. It's a very high level. But uh, Mark Anthony, he understood his audience. So understanding the audience is very important. Yasmin and Uwe and Raim Razali are not that kind of filmmakers. They are something very serious. They are very concerned about what is happening to their race and what is happening to the people in Malaysia. You cannot avoid Indians or Chinese or Kadazan or whatever. They are Malaysians. We cannot keep on compartmentalizing. You cannot have one group talking to this group in this way. And then to this group, you are talking different. There is something seriously wrong. We have to live together. You know, I wish I was um, I wish I was so wise to be able to say I knew all this fuss was going to happen. But I had no idea. I just <laughs> I had no idea that all this fuss was going to happen. And I blame it partly on my parents because I know that at the same time, if it was released just before they went to Hajj, you see. And I know for a fact that they were they were Mita Doa for Sefit and me <laughs> in front of the Kaaba, so it's sweet to them. Um, I think um, anything I can tell you, anything I can say about why Sefit is being discussed so much can only be hindsight and no foresight. I don't know if my next film will, will have any impact on it, but I hope it does. I will try and make it as honestly as I can in the next two films. And I hope they will make my parents very happy. Most of all, will Sepet change the face of cinema? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm very excited um, about what Yu Hang is doing. Uh, I'm a great admirer of Yu Hang and Osman Ali, primarily, because I see in them uh, honesty. Uh, I treasure above all in filmmaking uh, sincerity and honesty. Um, you can make a, a, a slightly shallow film, you can make, I, I almost believe that you cannot make a shallow film if you're being honest, because when you're being honest you go really deep into yourself and, uh, and therefore you cannot be, shallow, cannot be shallow. The two are almost mutually exclusive. I think you can make a cartoon, but if you're honest about it, you have a fantastic cartoon, uh, like Grave of the Fireflies by Hayao Miyazaki, which affected me, and even Monsters Inc. I think it was a great deal of honesty in my scene. I saw it and I was crying. Um, I love, I love it when people wear their hearts on their sleeves. And uh, I don't see much of it in Malaysian films. I'm not saying that wearing your heart on your sleeve is the only way to make films. It's just the way of making films which I personally prefer. I see it in Yu Hang's films, I see it in Osman Ali's films. And um, I consider them, these two are far better filmmakers than me. Uh, the Singaporeans are very excited about what's happening in Malaysia and very envious. The, the, the Singaporeans tell me that uh, the reason why they're having so much interest in our film is because they have no, no equivalent in their country. I, uh, they asked me to explain, I have no explanation. Somebody said that uh, in order to have um, a, a, a strong work in the arts, you have to have a thick working class uh, uh, stratum. And that if you, uh, Singapore perhaps has a thicker uh, middle to upper class, and the working class is quite thick. Maybe that's why I don't know. I can surmise. Uh, um, the artist director of Luc Besson was in PL recently, and had I was forced to have lunch with my PL Luc from the embassy. And uh, I met with this guy. This guy said to me, um, "How many people, um, how many new filmmakers are suddenly taking your country's films to uh, around the world?" And I said, "I think about six or seven filmmakers are having the taking have been taking." have been making films that have been travelling around the world. He said, well, definitely, there is a new way. I said to him, how can you tell? He said, it happened in Korea, it happened in Thailand. He said, the way he judges it is, actually about three or four directors making films that are travelling happen in Iran. Once these films start to travel around the world, they're usually separate from the mainstream, the so-called mainstream. And you have, if you have six or seven, there is definitely a new way going on in Malaysia. And I hope he's right. He was very excited, I was very excited, and uh, Pierre Le Bourse from the French Embassy was very excited. The Singapore Media Development Authorities are very excited about the movement in Malaysia and sent a bit to, to Spain.
space train. So we're here, they, <laughs> they want to kick my thing around. In Singapore, they want to send it to places. The foreground story, the background story. The foreground story in Sepet is a love story. But what is the background story? Is at the end when the voice of Jason comes out. There is hope for racial, uh, interracial uh, relationships. And that's what uh, Yasmin is trying to get across. So Sepet is a very important film in the history of cinema because it's going very deep in subjects and it affected Chinese, Malays and Indians. Are there any favorite filmmakers, local and abroad, and are you influenced? I'm asking. Um, favorite filmmakers, um, Lo I have. Local? Local, lo local. I, I, I like uh, Yu Hang and Osman Ali. I told you, I just love the way they think. And uh, Yu Hang in a different way, Osman in a different way. Osman, o Osman wants to make film like rice, I think everybody can eat about love, about, about simple things, about family affairs. And Osman writes from the heart and, and he sort of fake. Of course, Osman has, as a student, had his film featured in Cannes and then later uh, had a film uh, in the Red Sport Night. He doesn't make noise about it. I win in small festivals and the papers are very loud about it. Osman very quietly wins, uh, goes into these festivals and keeps very quiet. I admire him. Um, you hung because he's got courage. Um, this is not going public like this, it's only for students, right? Yeah. I like him when he's got balls. So, <laughs> so Young makes films that make you look at things differently, uh, that forces you to, 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 to watch in his terms. Uh, and I admire that as well. You know, in the past, uh, as much as I liked um, Billy Wilder, who wanted to make films for everybody, I also admire Casabitis, who was also very difficult to, to, to watch for people who are not used to it. And there is room, I think, in the world for all kinds of films. Films like Yuan, films like mine, hopefully, and films like Osman Ali. Um, Osman and Yuan are the ones I admire the most in this country. Abroad? Abroad in history or in recent, in recent, recent. times? In recent times, I, I love the work of um, Wes Anderson, uh, who made Rushmore and Royal Tenenbaum. I, I also like Taishi Kitano because he makes films his own way, um, very stark. Um, so many people to admire. Amira and I, she doesn't care. Yeah. Amira and I would make a film about Kevin Supra, she'd make a film with breasts all the place, and then she'd make a film about uh, Punjab, a Punjabi family, and then she'd make a film about uh, Indian and African relationships. She doesn't care, she just makes. Don't be afraid of books, don't be afraid of the arts, don't be afraid of literature. Just because you're studying film doesn't mean you have to study film. I think that the route to good filmmaking um, is not just in filmmaking. The route to, to filmmaking lies in, lies in your life, lies in uh, falling in love, lies in, life, lies in your principles. Uh, it also lies in other, other aspects of art. Film, um, some people say, is the, the ultimate art form because it's got Everything is an assault to the senses in every way. Uh, it's got literature in it, it's got poetry, it's got photography, it's got painting, it's got music, everything in it. So how can you say you want to make film yeah. when you know very little about music, <laughs> when you know very little about painting and photography, and all these things that contribute to film as an art form, I think you have to, you have to jama all sorts of lao. Uh, that's that's available to you in the world of art. Don't limit yourself to just film. Yes. The same advice I give to all my students. Four things. Read books, see films, mix with people who are better than you are, and travel. If you can have all of this, something will happen to you. But reading does not mean just read. But read uh, a lot of biographies, aside from fiction. But short stories, I think you should put on top of the list. Because short stories do not have an ending like the normal story, uh, like the happy ending and so on. So they make you think. And if you want to understand what is the ending, it is up to you. How do you think the story yeah. should end? So that makes you think. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, uh, physiologically, something happens when, st when you start to think. And uh, it's been proven that the brain cells expand when you have problems. 
but if you are very positive about problems, uh, about something to overcome and so on, instead of thinking that, you know, oh my God, what am I going to do? Then you see, something happened to your brain cells. It's very physiological. I have a confession uh, to make. The ending of Sepet um, being unfinished, um, one of the things that was going on in my mind while I was doing it, should I do this or should I not do it, was something Pablo Picasso said. You know, he's a uh, modern artist. Um, and I'm a great, great admirer of his culture particularly. He said that to finish a painting would be to rob it of its soul, which means what if you finish it, write down the last nocta and paint, what it dies. Uh, Picasso's words prove prophetic at least for Sepet. I think one of the reasons why Sepet is perpetually still being discussed on the internet and by people on the streets is because the ending was unfinished. It's very important to put your thoughts down on paper. I keep a journal from 1962. Uh, I kept a journal and today when I read about it 40 years later, I say, my God, I didn't realize that I was thinking about all of these things. So when you put your thoughts down, you are actually becoming your own mentor. So your diary becomes a mentor where you throw all your frustrations, your anger. When you're angry, you should put it down in writing. And I remember talking to somebody and uh, was very fond of talking about experimental films and then I said to them would you believe me if I told you that Sepet was experimental and they said there's nothing experimental about Sepet your camera work is pretty pretty classic and your storytelling is pretty classic and then I said to him but then you know um, that very same person complained to me that uh, Sepet is unrealistic because um, the parents didn't have a problem do you know what I mean and uh, I, I said to him that's where I experienced with it in my own life, my parents had no problems with my husband, who's Chinese, and his, his uh, Chinese parents. When I have a fight with my husband, they're on my side. That, that's how much, uh, how no problem there is in, in as far as our parents go. So, um, and if, and I think that's one of the reasons why I felt safe it was a film worth making. Because suddenly it becomes, uh, it's become a film about possibilities, not a film about the way things usually are. Uh, in my life, I dated a, a VHS pirated set, pirated VHS set before, and when I was much younger. And he he was very he he liked motion library films, and I used to laugh at him. But when I spoke to him more, I said to him, "You can't understand motion library films. The English is so complicated." He says, "Look, you idiot! I get the Hong Kong copy with Chinese subtitles." So for me, he was uh, his name was Max. He was about possibilities. Max was about possibilities. Maybe a majority of VHS sellers are a little bit, I don't know whether they are articulate or smart or not. But I met one who was extremely clever, and I think, therefore, he represents what is possible in us. And my in-laws represent what is possible uh, in, in, in mankind. So when people say it's unrealistic, and um, I think that I, I think experimental doesn't mean you have to make the camera shake. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to do jump cuts. The truth is, jump cuts were done by Goda in Breathless. How many years ago? 56, 57. In 56. Uh, yes. So, jump cuts and handheld cameras are not experimental. I would prefer to experiment with the very core of the story and make you look at an old relationship with new eyes. Only that is experimental.